We saw how Iris Scan helps prison officers to be sure they have their man. But they face another problem every day, the risk of attack. Despite the best security, inmates still end up with weapons they make on their own, and they're lethal. Probably one of our most dangerous ones is possession of a ruler. Inmates who are able to fashion them basically into uh, shanks, they're known as. You make the wrong move, and uh, uh, if you're not watching out, they can uh, attack you enough to, enough to kill you. You might wonder why officers don't use military-style armor. One reason is they need to be free to react in emergencies. Body armor would just slow them down and make them even more vulnerable to assault. But here at the Materials Research Laboratory of the U.S. Army, they may have the answer. Lightweight clothing that's absolutely stab-proof. And the secret isn't the fabric. It's this stuff, armor in a bottle. Flexible materials like Kevlar are great at stopping bullets, but surprisingly, it's almost useless stopping a knife. So uh, this is four layers of fabric, and this is a type of fabric you'd use in body armor, mm -hmm. police vests, even army vests. What I want you to do is take a little swing and go ahead and try to pop through that fabric. Okay. Not too big, not too hard? It, it, it went right through, didn't it? Okay, and if you look, this Kevlar isn't going to save a prison officer from a shanking. Okay, now this looks like a cool experiment. Where are we? To see why, this Eric's put the Kevlar swatch good. under a microscope. So that's pretty good in that's focus. Good. You can see how the spike pushes around the tough fibers. It just slides right between them. So no matter how tough the fibers are, a sharp blade can just slip through. What just we moved did, it to the side. Moved it to the side. Okay. They call that windowing sometimes. It's kind of like making a window. Right. And there's something sharp and pointy can go in between okay. the fibers. That makes sense. Right. See how far things Stretch are getting it. stretched and moved out of the way? So fiber strength means zip when it comes to a shank. Just stab, uh, but add way. some right liquid there. armor to fill the gaps. Really give it a good one? And right. it's a different story. Give it another one. Give it another <laughs> one. I'm going lefty. <laughs> it didn't puncture at all. I mean, it made a dent, but it didn't puncture. No, it would hurt pretty bad, but you're not going to have a spike going through your vital organs, which right. is probably better for you. This super strong goo is called sheer thickening fluid. OK, so how did you make this? Well, this actually has two parts in it. It's a liquid and a solid combined. So the liquid is this thing here. It's called polyethylene glycol. It's a polymeric liquid, very safe. It's kind of like antifreeze, but you could actually eat it. But you combine this with a solid phase, which right. in this case is a powder. It's silica powder, so silica right. is glass. Right. Um, but it's very special the way we combine yeah. these. This that you have in your hand right. was actually this amount of liquid mixed with this amount of powder. So how does this stuff work? The billions of silica nanoparticles, more than 100 times finer than human hair, mix easily and evenly in the glycol. In a liquid state, the particles have a weak molecular surface charge, so they don't clump together to form a solid. But when an object impacts the liquid, it changes radically. The object's kinetic energy forces the particles together, and they lock in a lattice with strong chemical bonds called a hydrocluster. The liquid becomes as hard as ceramic for a split second. Then, when the kinetic energy is spent, the bonds release, and the solution becomes liquid again. It's truly amazing. So I want you to push in there real slowly with that rod. And what you're going to see is there's not much resistance. It's kind of like a liquid. No, it's going down to the bottom smoothly. OK. But if you yank in a big hurry on it, <laughs> yeah. it will not let go. So once you stop pushing on it, it'll kind of go back to liquid again. It would fall off that spoon and come out again. When I apply strong kinetic energy, there's no way I can push through. As soon as I stop pushing, the silicon particles let go. 
tough as ceramic, but still a liquid, which means it soaks right into the woven Kevlar. This fluid is crammed in between all the little tiny filaments in this fabric. You see a little excess, you know, at the intersections, but it's really, really in there. We're looking through the microscope again. This time, I'm trying to pierce some treated Kevlar. The fabric's moving, but there's no windowing. There's no separation of the fabric. All it cares about is that you're pushing on it in some way. In this case, right now, you can feel feel how tight it's that taut. is. Yeah, and you can see it's pushing it in. That's right. So things are getting squeezed in there. Even though it's not shearing, it's under stress. It still looks like fabric. Remember before, those yarns were getting pushed Stretched and out. pulled, and it looks like somebody took a yarn and started yanking on yeah. things, took the fabric. Here, everything is still pretty, in, pretty much intact. So it's a big improvement on the raw fibers, but this technology is meant to save real lives in a tough world. And most hardcore prisoners pack a far bigger punch than I do. But what about a brutal stab from a big bad guy? This thing here, I want you to kind of squeeze it. Well, I can't find one here in the Army's materials research lab, so we're gonna drop this stainless steel spike from eight feet. That's equivalent to a blow from someone weighing 230 pounds. Now, at that height, that's a pretty good stab. So that's a big, yeah. strong person on a good day, but people can stab that hard. All right. 289, three, four, five. There it is. Three, two, one. And it did, it bent. Wow, it really bent. Even a massive blow like this doesn't make it all the way through. The shield of clump silica particles right held strong. And there is no hole whatsoever. The powerful kinetic energy it made it the silica it. particles wow, lock really tight into a ceramic barrier. OK. OK, I'm impressed. But how big a blow can this stuff really handle? Now, remember, I promised you something a little special. Yeah. Don't kid yourself. This hunting bow is no toy. It'll produce uh, somewhere in the vicinity of 175 feet per second. Right. Um, it's aluminum arrow, feather fletched, and it has 125 grain bullet field tip. Okay. In other words, this is a serious weapon. It could kill a bear at 20 paces. Be careful of the ricochet. First, I want to see what it does to untreated Kevlar. Shot. How far was it? I think it was 68 inches. Yeah. Now let's see what happens to a vest impregnated with liquid armor. Couldn't get through this. <laughs> well, we do lots and lots Remember, of Remember, this is a steel-tipped hunting arrow traveling at 170 feet a second. Our high-speed camera reveals something incredible. The arrow bounces right off. <laughs> ah, here it is. On the floor, not in there at all. all right. So probably what happens is that tip of the arrow, remember it's it's pointy. Right. It started to poke through, but just couldn't find its way all the way through, right. bounced off and came back. In this case, the uh, shear thickening fluid is holding those fibers in place, won't allow them to slide out of the way keeps the, uh, the arrow from getting all the way through. Right. And Eric has other applications in mind for this amazing goo. Just imagine what treated gloves could mean for rescue and healthcare workers. No more needle sticks from dirty syringes. So for example, police officers, often when they search somebody, they gotta search their pockets. Even sanitation workers picking up garbage, nobody wants to get stuck with needles. So there's a need for needle protective uh, materials. But getting lightweight, stab-proof uniforms into the prison system is still Eric's priority. These guards risk lethal attack every day, and liquid armor is life-saving technology. There's always that threat. If that threat exists and there's an, an item out there that can uh, protect us, Absolutely, as long as it's uh, you know, somewhat lightweight, something you can move around in.